but for reasons that we will ask him about, he feels that he has not gotten a, a just reward for a lot of the hard work that he has put into a lot of the, the opportunities that he thinks that he should have gotten here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We'd like to introduce you to Monty Bell. Monty Bell uh, has been here on Point of View uh, in the past. He has hosted this program in the past. As we mentioned, he has been at uh, various radio stations here in Chattanooga. And uh, he feels that uh, things just have not gone right in his life. And he is contemplating leaving town. He's contemplating uh, trying to find greener pastures. But yet and still, his family is here. He wants to be here. And we're just going to let him talk about the situation. Have I pretty much generally given an introduction as to what pretty we're all about here today? Pretty much so, Mr. Scrugg, with the okay. exception that I'm not leaving. You know, I don't think that this is something that... Uh, uh, that I need to run away from anymore. It's been 20 years now. Okay, let's just sort of take us back from to the beginning. Uh, I mentioned that you feel that you have actually not been given a lot of the opportunities mm -hmm. to do certain things here in Chattanooga that you feel that you're qualified to do. So first of all, what are you qualified to do? What kinds of opportunities have you pursued? And what have been some of the stumbling blocks and some of the reasons why you haven't been able to actually succeed in those particular opportunities? Okay, well, you know, I can't answer all of them with one, one statement, but uh -huh. uh, we'll give it a shot. Well, th this job-seeking opportunity, I guess, is what it called. For me, it hasn't been a career. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a long time coming, though. Uh, I started in the media at age 15 was perhaps one of the youngest to ever um, direct a newscast in this city. Radio? Radio. Television, radio? Radio, and um, did a lot of volunteer work at the beginning. Mm -hmm. A lot of audio tags, uh, a lot of commercials. Mm -hmm. At one point, um, they said that I was the most recognized voice in the city of Chattanooga. They who now? Uh, they being the, uh, the managers of various stations, uh, mm -hmm. news directors of various stations. Uh, the most recognizable voice, as they say it. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has been almost 20 years ago. But I never had the opportunity to receive uh, that just pasture, as you said in the opening of the program. And I'm talking about a lot of years of hard work mm -hmm. to the point where failure became associated with my works. Not because the hard work wasn't provided and put into it, but because there were those, uh, I, I guess, older than I was mm -hmm. at that time who felt perhaps that this was not a profession that I would stick with, mm -hmm. uh, wasn't serious about it. This is a guy with just a good voice, and uh, uh, he won't stick with it. And after 10 years, uh, that same attitude towards me still persisted. And, and we're talking about uh, this point of view being the first television opportunity that I had on air. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of work behind the scenes before this opportunity was granted to me, but this is not a paid spot. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about being paid to do what I have been involved in for 20 years of my life. And so it's not, media. it's not a matter of your not being trained to do this. Or is Definitely it, are not. Are you, you trained? Definitely not. Uh, I have better qualifications in terms of experience than perhaps anyone that's on the air right now. Mm -hmm. Anyone that, everyone that's on the air right now in a senior position of anchor, uh, I was in the business when they either started here or came here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was always overlooked. There was always an excuse why I could not get on the air uh, delivering news. So what excuses were you given? Uh, some excuses uh, pertain to the fact that, uh, uh, well, you don't show up well on camera. It's mm -hmm. one of the excuses that they used. Um, well, let's go back to the radio now. The radio, you wouldn't have that problem. Didn't have that problem, so but couldn't get, the, uh, couldn't get the money. You know, here I am, news director of certain stations here in the city, uh, or field reporter, as they had it when I began. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't make any money. You know, and that, that was quite strange to me, that uh, here I am with a title, and I'm working five days a week. I mean, I'm actually going out busting the bonds here mm -hmm. to uh, gather news, uh, good news, mm -hmm. if you will, uh, to bring that, that story back to the station and produce that story. I mean, good quality news reporting. Well, you wouldn't expect to go into a station and initially make as much money as somebody who's been there five or six oh, years. Oh, definitely not. I mean, we're, we're not wanting to stretch the imagination here, but I'm saying that uh, once you achieve a title of uh, news director, mm -hmm. you know, that should come along with some money, too. Mm -hmm. uh, it was because of that reason. Could not get on the air and television. Um, and then not being paid for the work that I did in radio, 
which led me to, to seek greener pastures in other states. Mm -hmm. And what really hurt me was the fact that just calling other stations, uh, by them just listening to me talk to them and request uh, information about opening positions, uh, led to me then going to the stations mm -hmm. that I would contact out mm -hmm. of state. Uh, I'm, I'm saying, Mr. Scrooge, within just a few minutes of talking with me and then looking over my resume, uh, I'm on the air in a paid position mm -hmm. where I'm, I'm able to, to afford an apartment. Uh, at one time, I had several vehicles mm -hmm. uh, as a result of working out of state. And uh, each time I would come home, mm -hmm. uh, I, I would lose everything. I mean, lose everything. Uh, and then couldn't get anything to replace it. Now, what do you mean, lose everything? You were working, right? Absolutely. Now, what do you mean, lose everything? Well, for example, when I was uh, called back uh, from Knoxville, mm -hmm. was news director there, James, one of James Brown's old radio stations, WJBI, mm -hmm. was in BMK uh, was back in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had mentioned to you once before that um, I'd received a call from, uh, at that time, Bill Dorsey, that was a mm -hmm. part of the uh, university. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, told him uh, that uh, I was thinking of going to Lynchburg from Knoxville mm -hmm. to take on a news director's job. Mm -hmm. And at this individual, uh, knowing of my experience years ago, uh, recommended that I come back. You know, there's a chance that uh, uh, the university is going to have a station. Mm -hmm. This would be an opportunity for you to come back, uh, do some work at home, show them uh, what you've attained mm -hmm. uh, being away. And I came back and... Um, we started that process of uh, looking at which location the station was going to be uh, built uh, and things of that nature. And I was unaware that uh, there was not already a facility set up. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell me that. But when I did come back, the thing that enticed me uh, was the fact that uh, all of my paperwork for school had already been filled out. I mean, there was, I was already ready. Uh, all I needed to do, in other words, was to just show up at the university. I'm in school. You know, all that had already been prepared for me. Uh, before I got back, and so I was quite excited. Mm -hmm. Told a lot of people, uh, those that I've met, you know, throughout the United States, hey, I'm going home, and uh, there's a there's not only a job for me, but it'll, it's an opportunity for me to go back to school. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was quite pleased at that. Uh, so what happened in terms of the radio station? Uh, well, they hired several other individuals in. Uh, so you were not hired? No, never yeah. even worked on. The Did station. you get in school? Got in school. Uh huh. Stayed for a little while, and. Uh, Obviously, uh, knowing that the station had now been erected and on the air, and I'm not a part of it, mm -hmm. which is the reason that I was asked to come back to mm -hmm. the city, mm -hmm. uh, my grades began to fail. Uh, here again, not working, because I'm, I'm a full-time student now. Uh, this yeah. is after 10 years of yeah. being in the workforce. I come back now and find out I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting in a classroom now being dictated to. But uh, there was something that I shared with a, another member of the university this morning when I called in. Uh, thanking them for not providing me with my transcripts. Uh, I needed my transcripts several months ago from the university to show that uh, I at least attended the university in mm -hmm. uh, my field of interest and couldn't get them. And uh, in fact, I had a, a verbal altercation with the lady in charge of the records department at UTC. But did she tell you why you couldn't get your transcripts? Absolutely not. Uh, from the moment that she snatched the papers that I had in my hand out uh, to read them for herself as if I was illiterate and couldn't read, uh, I snatched them back, and uh, it was at that point I went up to your office. I said, forget it. <laughs> so what I'm getting from you, uh, Mr. Bell, is that you feel that, <laughs> for lack of a better term, the system is against you for some reason or the other. Well, um, and nobody I don't know what to the system you, means. I, I don't know what. I, well, yeah, you I've try to get that a job. Terminology. Uh, you try to get uh, into school. Uh, you go to school. You can't get your records. Everything that you seem to try to pursue, there seems to be a stumbling block. There seems to be a hatchet. There seems to be... A termination point. Well, because these are things that are of the positive nature, uh, Mr. Scruggs. Every, every program I've ever produced has been to uh, educate uh, not just young people, but uh, those that would like to learn to speak effectively, uh, to have a better diction and enunciation uh, qualification behind them. Uh, I've always felt that speaking proper English was a key. Mm -hmm. uh, but why don't, you pursue, language. why don't you pursue some other field, such as the teaching field, if radio gives you this stumbling block? Mm -hmm. And I still don't get the reason why radio is giving you this stumbling block. You haven't indicated to me 
what they tell you as to why you can't stay at a radio station. Well, I mean, it's, it's, other than the money, it's the same. Um, well, now they haven't actually said I couldn't stay in radio. Well, you um, just leave on your own then. Well, I mean, when you when you can't pay the bills, when you can't put gas in your car to get to the station because they're not paying you any money, okay. uh, there's no point in staying. We're talking about uh, a career choice here. We're not mm -hmm. talking about doing something for, for pleasure. So actually, you're saying that radio, uh, in general, just does not pay as much as you would like for them to pay. They don't pay me. Now, I'm, I'm sure they pay a lot of the females a lot of money. But uh, uh, there have been cases where I, I couldn't understand how could uh, certain females working at stations uh, live here or drive this car, and uh, here I am, news director, and I can't... Uh, and I'm on the bus line. You know, so I think there's some favoritism both in radio and television, uh, uh, particularly for minorities. Uh, you can look on your television stations uh, Monday through Friday here. Uh, and you, uh, in fact, I've, I've yet to see a black male uh, anchor a, a news broadcast uh, on television, uh, particularly Monday through Friday. Now, uh, you have some females, uh, black females, that are on the air, but uh, no. Mr. Bell, were you to no. go to a television station here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, mm -hmm. or a radio station, apply, give them your resume, what do you think they'll tell you? Let's assume that you know that they have an opening. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I've done that recently uh, here at this station. Uh, there was a uh, position for a weatherman available. Mm -hmm. But uh, my expertise is in news, you know. I, yeah. I'm a reader, primarily. Well, did you, uh, do you have reporter. qualifications as a weatherman? I, I can do weather. Um, I've, I've done it in the past, uh -huh. so but my thing is is news. You know, this is this is what I'm interested in. It's what I'd like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell you, it's been a situation where if I want coffee, they offer me tea. There's always something other than what it is that I want to do. And that's was, been what? primarily in radio too. Uh, there have always been state uh, reports that I couldn't go out and do. Those mm -hmm. that I felt were uh, stories that needed to have been told, and radio could have done that very effectively. Mm -hmm. Uh, as news director of several stations, uh, I had the opportunity to produce the kinds of stories that I mm -hmm. thought mm -hmm. uh, would be beneficial to the community. Mm -hmm. And none of these stories dealt with rape, none mm -hmm. dealt with murder. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't deal with child molestation, mm -hmm. didn't deal with anything like that. Uh, my stories dealt with young people, uh, middle-aged people, older people that were actually doing some positive things in the community. Every broadcast that ever came under my direction dealt with some positive things that were happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what I received in terms of letters uh, from the listening audience and radio, uh, it, it was something that was desperately needed. And I'm glad that uh, I had that opportunity to provide a listening audience with some good news for a change. You know, as a, as a journalist now, it sickens me to hear the stories that they give attention to. Uh, here I am, a man of 20 years' experience. Uh, in 93, I was registered, licensed to do business here, to mm -hmm. teach. Uh, my business was for profit. After one year of spending at uh, Howard School, if we can say that, of Academics and Technology Sports Academy, uh, they rented me a volunteer after one year of service. What, they did not renew your contract? Uh, well, they told me there wasn't a contract. And, uh, you know, we're talking about teaching about 125 kids is what I had all total, not just at Howard School. Uh, we were trapped there at that school because mm -hmm. we never could get the first check to buy the, the VHS tapes or audio tapes that we needed to record mm -hmm. our program. We couldn't get uh, the reporter's pads. You know, this was a program to teach young kids at the high school level primarily mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity to get out and become young reporters. Okay. I mean. All right, we're talking with uh, Monty Bell. This is Point of View, and uh, this is a, a session dealing with a young man who feels that he has not gotten a just shake here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in reference to a lot of the opportunities that he has pursued. And we're actually talking with him to see basically why he hasn't gotten this particular shake, mm -hmm. uh, particular opportunity. Now, you've, you've talked primarily about... Uh, opportunities in radio which did not come about. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned about the teaching situation. Have there been any other areas in your life which have actually affected your overall life as it stands now? 
Um, well, I mean, I'm into music, too. Yeah. Uh, well, what has happened there? I, I get the impression that nothing's gone right in your life. Well, uh, right? yeah, everything has gone right, uh, Mr. Skill. I mean, Mr. Scruggs. It, uh, things have gone right. I mean, I've been able to educate myself. Yeah. You know, I did a program here about a week or so ago about home educated yeah. uh, students, and uh, I think I was perhaps one of the first to be home educated because that's where I learned the practical skills of, uh, of speaking effectively. I did all that at home. You know, right in the comfort of my four-cornered room. But you did go to Brainerd High School. You wanted to end attended Brainerd let, High School. Let people know I mean, you did well, go to Brainerd High School. I mean, just... <laughs> attended Brainerd High School. It was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Uh, was quite active in a number of uh, uh, different organizations that the school held at that time. Uh, in fact, I was uh, instrumental in getting the mascot for the school uh, for those that came after I did. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, this gets back to training. You say that you homeschooled yourself in mm -hmm. terms of speaking and in terms of the English language and this kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. But you can't really put that on a resume when you go to get a job at a radio station and say, I learned to speak, I learned to do radio at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want to see something through the Federal Communications Commission or some school or some broadcasting uh, school, I would mm -hmm. think. I don't know. That's I would true. think now. Well, maybe so, so but... This uh, might be one of the problems. Well, uh, I don't think so, because when uh, the opportunity was presented to attend Chattanooga State, uh, mm -hmm. that was with a scholarship uh, from the Private Industry Council, uh, and from the homeschool experience that I received, I learned to produce radio and television commercials mm -hmm. uh, at home. Uh, and when I got to State uh, on this scholarship program, and we're still talking, having some experience before I ever attended Chattanooga mm -hmm. State, uh, there was a chance that we could go into the production room and produce commercials and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went off for a Thanksgiving break. And at that time, I was working on doing a spot promoting Chattanooga State. I had already set it up for the talent to participate uh, in this commercial. I had already written it, et cetera, et cetera. But during the Thanksgiving <coughs> break, I find that uh, the gentleman in charge of the broadcasting program over there decided to go into my files and uh, take a listen to what I had been doing, which was okay, but uh, the trouble started when uh, I began to see uh, phone calls at home from the talent that I was going to have in my commercial, mm -hmm. stating that I was unfair because uh, the commercial is, uh, is already running, and apparently uh, I had chosen some other people uh, to participate in the program. And this thing took place without my awareness. I mean, my voice is all over the <laughs> radio stations, and uh, they've already cut a 30-second uh, uh, spot uh, 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 on television for it using their own talent. And I'm saying, my God, you know, this is my spot. And uh, the response that I got from them is that because I did it at Chattanooga State in the production room, it became their property. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, my God, you know, this is, this is unfair, you know, for... Uh, I came here to learn. I didn't come here to get robbed, you know, or, or to have my properties taken away from me, and then you call it your own. And uh, the city council has done that, too, uh, with my okay. cleanup program. Right. Okay, tell us about that briefly. And, uh, well, when I came here in 82, I, I had no idea what I was going to do. My dad was terminally ill, mm -hmm. and um, I had some money saved up from being out of state, uh, mm -hmm. working in media, and what have you. And so when I came, I presented to the city council uh, a proposal, Chattanooga Linda Hand Network. Mm -hmm. And uh, they told me it was no good and, uh, you know, perhaps I needed to go out and do some other things, you know, was their advice to me. But uh, they kept a copy of the proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, sometime later, I find out that uh, an environmental judge has been created. And then I get another call. Money, I'm glad that they thought enough of your program to uh, get on TV and talk about it. Well, here again, I'm thinking, what are you talking about? So I turn on to the uh, PBS station, and true enough, there they are talking about uh, the, Chattanooga, uh, the, the city council's something that they called it, uh, recommendations for cleaning up Chattanooga. A proposal well, that you had initially presented to the commission? That they said that they was no good. No good, you, you're this and that, and uh, here this thing is on the air. And so... Yeah. Uh, I wasn't okay about that at all. In fact, I went down and I talked with the council about it and they shared with me, oh, Mr. Bell, I know you're upset, I know you're angry, but keep in mind that the city council has not acted on any of the recommendations. And my response to that was, I mean, when you came on TV, <laughs> you were acting on recommendations. You know? Okay, okay, Mr. Bell, you have given us a series of situations and incidents where you have been distorted, you've just been disregarded, mm -hmm. you have been eliminated. 
Not taken seriously. And uh, not taken seriously. I guess that's the best term to use here. Are you bitter? And if you are, at whom are you bitter? Bitter for what reason? Uh, I'm somewhat like Lazarus, uh, sitting at the gate of the rich man. Mm -hmm. But instead of having a finger to dip in the water, I've got a full cup. And I know that those individuals who have put these stumbling blocks in my way are going to thirst eventually. Mm -hmm. And just like Lazarus, I'm going to not be able, not because of my own free will, I'm not going to be able to share that cup of water that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, because in the bosom of Abraham, uh, we're on our way to higher heights, see. Mm -hmm. And okay. I won't be able to, to quench the thirst of those who have created this problem because it has created a problem even within my family. And I'm saying, you know, uh, when my dad passed away, uh, I'm not saying it directly as a result of the turmoil that I experienced uh, at that time. But this has left my mom in a situation where it almost appears as, as if I will never be able to provide for her. Okay, what I want to ask you, and we really uh, just about to run out of time here, mm -hmm. is now, where do we go from here? Where do you go from here? What, do you, what is there to look forward to? You've given us the impression that Chattanooga is really not uh, giving you a fair shake and uh, some fair deals in terms of employment, in terms of just general living conditions. Mm -hmm. So where do you go from here? We go to court. We go to court. And we're going to court. Against whom? Uh, we're going um, against some of the radio stations here, some of the television stations. Uh, you know, in my adverse career, I've had a shot at cooking and things of this yeah. nature. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, to, to, to file what, what specific grievances now? Well, uh, there's some things that we can't talk about right now because we're already in court on some cases. Uh -huh. uh, some things have been said to me to, to remain confidential uh, yeah. in its nature until after uh, some thorough investigations uh, uh, can be completed. So is this generally discrimination? that you're talking about? Well, uh, and if so, what kind of discrimination? I don't know, Mr. Scruggs, because I've been a person who have, I've grown up with everybody, uh, blacks, whites, I've got whites in my family. So and you don't think it's racial? Well, I mean, if it is, it's, it's too bad, because uh, I'm not going to turn face on uh, the whites that are in my family. You know, that, that would be stupid. Uh, we're, we're talking about, I, I've lived with whites all my life. Okay. All right, now, now <laughs> what, what lesson do you want us to get from this? Now, we, we well, brought you on here the to talk about this The lesson is that uh, this is, what I find quite shocking is the fact that uh, there are people who weren't born in this city, weren't raised in the city of Chattanooga, but they're dictating to us how we should be as Chattanoogans. Uh, this is the thing that hurts me most of all. We've, we've brought people into this city and we have given them humongous salaries uh, and they have raped and robbed our city. Mm -hmm. But yet the local people have to, have to almost uh, go to shelters for survival. Uh, this is incredible. This is a terrible lesson that we're giving uh, to everyone as citizens of this of this community. Uh, we've got people who take advantage of, of, of business cars, they go out and do weird things, and not only that, but the professional people that should have been professional here in the, for the past 30 years are the ones that I'm looking at. Uh, if you graduated in year 1960, then I'm holding you responsible for the problems that we're having in this city because uh, we're looking at a situation where uh, before 1960, people were thriving, people were we're doing all kinds of things, you know, moving up to the, uh, uh, the year 2000. But from 1960 on, we have, we have lost contact with, with everything. The people that have created a lot of problems for me uh, uh, should have been the ones that, that were, uh, that, hey, I, I guess we could say fall in the, the, the civil rights movement. You know, okay. So. Well, hopefully those persons are listening. In fact, I, want, I graduated in 1960, so thank hopefully you. some of my classmates are listening <laughs> to what you have just said. And uh, we do thank you for coming on and talking about this. Uh, it's something that needs to be said. I think that it sort of uh, got some attention from somebody out there. I mm. hope those people know who they are. Thank you very much for coming on, and we do wish you luck. We hope that things do sort of look up for you in the mm -hmm. future, Mr. Bell, but certainly we do appreciate your coming on today and telling us about it. Do I have time to thank the well, Arts got, and Education uh, Council? Well, you, may, you got 10 seconds. Thank you, Arts and Education Council. Uh, thanks to you, I've had my opportunity to uh, present my talent and my skills on television, and uh, I really want to thank you, Mr. Scruggs. You've been the one man in this city that have taken me seriously, and I really appreciate that. Okay. God will bless you, too. All right. Appreciate you coming by. Thanks. Our guest has been Mr. Monty Bell, and uh, he's been talking about his concerns growing up in Chattanooga. I'm Booker T. Scruggs, and this has been the Arts and Education Council's Point of View.